Michael Stutz of MMA Diehards catching up here with Michael Bisping at the IZAD Center. How does it feel to be picked for the, the Fight Club uh, UFC uh, Q&A with the fans? Yeah, it's great. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, I love interacting with the fans and, uh, you know, I mean, I think, that, I think that's one of the things that has helped grow this sport, you know. Uh, a, the fans are so loyal and B, the UFC, you know, they, they give back to the fans a lot. They set up these great things like Q&A and a lot of different uh, interactive opportunities. So it's great, you know, I, I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy people and I'm not a recluse, you know, I, I, I enjoy interacting with people. So, yeah, it's great. And uh, I know a tough loss uh, against Chael Sonnen, but did you feel you outright won that fight or were you kind of like waiting for the judge's decision? I've watched the fight back several times and, and every time I watch it, I think I won, you know. It was a, but listen, I'm, I'm not going to cry and, and complain about it, you know. It was a close fight. I think I got rounds one and two, he definitely got round three. Some judges, whatever, you know, they may be favoured, they, they take downs a bit much. I think the general consensus is that I won. Chael Sonnen even thought that I won. Um, after the fight, he said he thought I got the first two rounds. But, you know, it went to a decision, it was a close fight, and he got the nod on the night. So, well done to him. I'm not bitter about it in the slightest, but I'll fucking kill him when I see him. What? That's got to be tough, too. I mean, a tough decision, uh, losing to Juan Le Silva at UFC 110, losing to Rashad Evans, UFC 71, another close fight. Is that something that creeps in the back of your mind, that they get slighted like that? I mean, it's got to be yeah, pretty draining you know, to know I you mean, won. I mean, yeah, I, I, it seems like I'm, I'm never going to get a title shot. Every time I get on the cusp of it, I put together a good win streak, and then I lose by you know a decision that maybe I think I should have won. But you know that that's down to me. You know you can't blame my opponents for that. You know I, I should try and take them out and, and, and beat them to it. Um, that's what you know. That's what I'm trying to do. Now fight Tim Bowick. You know I think I'm still in the mix up there. You know I, I definitely haven't gone down. I think I'm still one of the top few. Um, I know I can definitely give Anderson a good fight. I know if Chael wins, I can definitely beat Chael. So, um, you know, I'm here, I'm ready and waiting, and uh, fingers crossed I'll get my shot soon. And uh, what do you feel you have the advantage against uh, Tim Bosch? Um, to be honest, I, f I feel in most areas, you know. I think definitely technical striking, I've definitely got the, uh, the ability there, uh, the advantage. I think speed, definitely got the advantage. Footwork, the advantage is very flat footed. Um, it's supposed to be a wrestler, I haven't seen him use that too much, and uh, I think I'm equally as good a wrestler as him, if not better. Um, uh, by, by, all, uh, by all accounts, he's a very, very strong guy, so if anything, we'll give him the strength advantage there but you know this this isn't a weightlifting competition this is a fight i think i'm a better athlete and i'm I, I definitely a better jiu-jitsu as well the guy seems to have nothing off his back that said i'm expecting a tough tough fight you know he's, he's, he's put together a good win streak you know people say he's gonna knock me out you know is he gonna knock me out come on let's be honest you know he has knocked out you know so um were you impressed at his comeback against the kami or did yeah, you I was think impressed it was a he came lucky. back from getting his ass absolutely manhandled you know, and I think that's the impressive thing, to be honest. He did get, he got completely dominated, but then he turned around, his corner said to him, you have to go out this round and finish him. And he went out and did that. You know, so the fact that he has that, he's, he's hard to break. He's not going to be easy to break. He's going to be there to the last minute, fighting tooth and nail. So, you know, a guy like that's always dangerous. And um, I know you you got to be itching to get that rematch against Chael, but uh, you can't control who's going to win that matchup with Anderson Silva. Would you rather face Anderson and be and be the first one to dethrone him, or get that rematch against Chael? Well, you know, I mean, uh, it's weird. In my mind, I really want to fight Chael because I felt I was robbed, you know, and I really want to fight him again. Uh, but on the flip side, as you say, you know, I mean, everyone wants the shot at Anderson Silva. Everybody wants to be that guy to dethrone him. You know, he's got to lose at some point. I feel I match up well. I feel I feel I give anyone in the world a good fight and uh, not get out class. So, yeah, I, I know I can match up with Anderson Silva and give him a good fight and give him a tough time. Um, you know, to be honest, I'll fight either of them. You know, Chael Sonnen would be two birds with one stone because I get the title shot and I get a rematch. But then on the flip side, fighting Anderson. That'd be amazing as well. And, uh, you know, newly signed to the UFC in the middleweight division, Hector Lombard. And uh, Dana was talking yesterday saying that, you know, if he gets past Stan, uh, he could get a title shot. Does that piss you off, Michael? Yeah, it does piss me off a little bit. You know, I mean, I've been slogging away for six years in the UFC now, fighting the best guys in the world, you know. And just because Hector Lombard's been knocking out bloody part time fighters, you know, probably hold down jobs full time. And, you know, he's been knocking out people that I haven't got a clue who they are. I've never even heard of them. You know, well, I've been knocking out the best fighters in the world. You know, fighting the best consistently for six years. You know, he's going to come in after knocking out John the Baker from around the corner. You know, and, and he gets a title shot. He's going to get past Brian Stan first. And don't get me wrong, Hector Lombard, by all accounts, is a great fighter. I'm not knocking him. I'm, right. I'm, I'm just 
I'm just, uh, you know, I feel I'm getting overlooked a little bit. And you, uh, you've switched up some things in your life and your camp. Uh, you're no longer with Wolf Slayer, and, and you've moved to, uh, you moved to the U.S. and California. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, living in California now. Yeah, uh, moved out there uh, last year, and uh, we love it. Kids love it, and girlfriend loves it. It's a great lifestyle. I miss England, I miss the people, I miss the sense of humour, uh, but I don't miss the weather. <laughs> the weather's terrible and um, and for me, you know, being a mixed martial artist, the uh, the opportunities and the training opportunities out here are just much much bigger than what they are in the UK and uh, I've only got a short lifespan as a fighter and I've got to try and really maximise my potential as a fighter and whilst I did fantastic in the UK um, there's, there's just much more money to be made out here in the States at the moment you know in terms of endorsements, appearances, things like that you know um, it's, it's, it's just this is this is where this is the mecca of the sport you know there's mixed martial arts is huge out here you know so it makes sense to be here. And uh, you're, you're always known as the antagonist or the, the villain role. Is, is that a role that you relish or is that something that just kind of, yeah. you know, just kind of happened organically? Uh, well, no, yeah, 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 I never went out. You know, normally someone says something about me and I'm, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm an emotional guy and I'll say something back. And then, of course, everybody wants to say it was me that started it. But I'll be honest, nine times out of ten it wasn't. But I've probably got the loudest mouth, so all they remember is me going on about it. But, um... I'm, it's not something that concerns me. It's not something I, 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 I pay too much attention to. I just be myself and train and try and find the way I train and I treat those closest to me with respect and uh, you know, so they know who I am. People say I'm a bad guy. I, I think I'm losing that status lately, which is a bit, a bit of a shame. I walked out here at the Q&A's today and everyone cheered and I was expecting a boo. So, <laughs> you know, remember I'm an asshole. Remember to boo me. And uh, you know the middle finger. I see you got the MMA elite, so everything's cool with them after oh, the whole yeah, thing. MMA elite. I'm a proud, proud member of the team. Um, absolutely, you know they've been a, a sign with them recently. They've been a terrific sponsor, and uh, they really are. They're a great team. They're like a family, and I'm proud to represent uh, MMA elite. And uh, any predictions, lastly, for uh, your, your fight against Bosch at UFC 149? Yeah, Bosch. You know, I mean, I'm expecting a tough fight. He's going to come out. He's going to hit me, no doubt. You know, he swings hard and. He's a big old strong boy, so I'm expecting a tough time, but I think uh, ultimately I'm going to wear him down and I'm going to TKO him. Um, I'm going to pick him apart, I'm going to hit him as hard as I can, as many times as I can, until the referee pulls him off, pulls me off him. All right, Michael, we very much appreciate a few minutes here, and best of luck to you at UFC 149. My pleasure. Thanks, guys.